Yes, sir. We finally got rid of them glasses forever. Just like you need to get rid of your old Ableton default template. Because today we are going over the craziest optimizations that are literally going to change the way that you make beats. All right. So we got a ton of crazy optimizations for you guys. So let's just jump right in. The most important optimization is going to be color coding your tracks. As you can see, I have my melodies all green. I have my kick and 808 and bass all in white and pink for all of my drum samples. So definitely color your different groups here so that way it becomes muscle memory for you and you'll know what color to look for when you need to edit a particular track. All right, so this next tip is gonna allow you to lay down your ideas in minutes so that you don't lose them and you're able to like put them down right away. So what you're gonna do is find your favorite sounds. You can see I have all these sounds right here that I use on a normal basis, right? Hi-hat, snare, rim, clap. I pick my favorite sound that I go to the most often for each of these categories same with the 808 bass and kick and I even have a stock piano that I like to use all the time this way you're not gonna have to spend any time finding drum sounds or different sounds to use when you have an idea you can just go lay it down super quickly and then you can always go back later and change them next we're gonna talk about something that's gonna help you with your CPU and also for time optimization and what we're gonna do for this one is go ahead and create some different sends here with our favorite effects so if you don't know you can right click and you can say insert return track right here and then you can go ahead and put your favorite things on here so for my reverb I have this favorite reverb this Valhalla room that I use on my hi-hats I use this on my snares claps all kinds of different things so it's gonna be really quick if I want to add this and I won't have to put it on a bunch of different tracks and then all you have to do when you want to use it is use this send knob right here that corresponds to the different one as you can see a and B and we have an a and B so just turn it up and this is like a dry wet knob depending on how much of that effect you would like and it's really that easy now you have that effect on your track and you're ready to move on yo this next one might be obvious but it's honestly one of the most important ones that we're gonna go over today so make sure you don't skip this for this one we're gonna make sure that we have an EQ on every single one of our tracks yes every single one of them but more than that let's go ahead and put a low cut already because as you know when we're mixing especially for a lot of these drums we're pretty much low cutting everything so I use fab filter go ahead and use any EQ that you like and what you want to do is set up the low cut so that it's already ready to go so that way you don't have to click around and make it all you have to do is literally move it bam and now you're done mixing and it was literally that quick so go ahead and do that for every track that's not one of your bass tone tracks right I'm not gonna do it for my kick 808 or bass because I'm not cutting lows out of that but I'm gonna do it for my melodies and then all of my drums as well all right so now we have to prepare our 808 and our bass tracks and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a tuner on here so hopefully you're using Ableton if not you might have to find a similar plugin but this tuner right here is gonna help us know exactly what key our sample is in now since I already have this template set up I went ahead and made sure everything was already in the correct key so it's gonna be in C but a lot of time these samples aren't in C already so adding that right there is gonna allow you to go ahead and find what note it's in and then you can tune it back to C really easily and it's just gonna save you that little bit more time all right here's a crazy hack to make new tracks really quickly but they already have EQs and everything prepared on them and I haven't seen anyone talk about this yet all right so you can see right here in our melody track we have a MIDI and audio track ready to go and as you can see we have that EQ on it that already has the low cut so anytime you want to make a new track you can literally just duplicate this one and you can go on it and it has everything set up for you right it's got your EQ and everything so you can go ahead and throw and throw a new VST on here or an instrument or a one shot or if you want to use an audio so let's say maybe you're using a sample you have this audio track ready to go and you can just duplicate this a bunch of times and now you have a bunch of tracks that already have your presets on them for your EQ same thing with the drums as you can see over here in my drum group I have a MIDI and audio track right here so I can literally do the same thing whether I'm using a drum audio sample or I want to make a MIDI clip I can go ahead and duplicate it really quickly there and then my EQ is already set up and ready to go all right and this is a friendly reminder to go ahead and don't forget to set your favorite BPM on your template I use 145 because I usually use anywhere from like 140 to 150 so that's a happy medium for me but go ahead and put your favorite BPM there so it's already ready to go next let's configure our looper optimization so that we can go ahead and start looping our track right off bat without even having to worry about it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to arrangement view right here and you're gonna go ahead and make your little looper and go ahead and set it in the first eight bars so that it's already eight bars long which is the normal amount of loop 
If you do four bars or something, you can go ahead and set it to four and then go ahead and turn loop on. So by default, when you're ready to go into your arrangement view, your loop is already playing and it's already going. And then all you have to do is just start making it. It's that easy. All right, and before we jump into these last couple optimizations, I wanna let you know that our merch line is finally out. So if you click the link below, you can go ahead and check it out. I set the prices really, really low, so I'm barely making anything off of them, but I wanted to make it affordable for everybody if you wanna grab one. There's lots of different options, tons of really great colors, and as you can see, it fucking fits amazing. They're nice and form-fitting, and they're very comfortable, so check that out if you want. And also, if you just want to support the channel and you don't want a shirt or anything like that, we got our dope-ass new drum kit that just dropped a little while ago. All the links are going to be in the description below. Now, let's get back into these. All right, so next, we're going to make sure our master chain is ready to go ahead of time. So let's go ahead and get our master going. And for me, I just like to put a utility on here and this is in case I need to turn up everything together at once and then I also put a soft clipper here as well all I'm really doing is I'm using a glue compressor but I went ahead and turned the range down by default it's all the way up so if you turn this down it's not going to use any of the glue compressor whatsoever and then I just click this soft clipper on so all it's doing is using a soft clip feature that's literally all I'm doing for my master chain if there's anything you like to do for yours you can go ahead and throw it on there if you do some complex stuff, you could even just deactivate it and then activate it later. That's another idea that if you, if you want. I mean, whatever. All right, since we made it this far, now we gotta go ahead and save our default template. And it's super easy. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna go up to File here, and then we're gonna go ahead and save this live set as our default set. So once you're done, you're gonna see this is gonna pop up right here, and you can go ahead and name it whatever you want. Then you can click Enter. For me, it's gonna ask me if I wanna overwrite it. We're gonna press OK. And then now when you go in and you go ahead and make a new live set, Ableton should go ahead, we're not gonna save, Ableton should go ahead and open the new default set that you just made and you're good to go. All right, so that's how you optimize your template to the fullest extent, but I also wanna make sure you're not making these rookie mistakes that I see a ton of producers make time and time again. So go ahead and check out this video right here and you're not a rookie anymore. It's that simple. But besides that, guys, I'm going to be catching you all again in the next one. Love y'all, boys. Make sure to subscribe. We're almost to 10K, and that's it. Peace out.